Hey guys, LevelCap here. Today we're going to be talking about key binding in first person shooters on the PC. I'll be using Battlefield 4 as an example, but a lot of the techniques or ideas behind this can be applied to most shooters that you play. Now there's many crazy ways to set up your key bindings in game. I'm going to talk about the key binding setup that I use and sort of my philosophy behind it. It's not just what I've kind of grown accustomed to necessarily. There's a lot of key binding setups that I've changed over time because I've realized that there's just more efficient ways to actually bind your keys. Now Battlefield along with many shooters requires you to be able to access lots of gear and gadgets while still staying mobile in the fight. Not reducing your mobility is one of the key philosophies behind my key binding setup. You have your middle finger, your ring finger, and your pointer finger, all which access the WASD keys, assuming that you're using a more traditional setup. There's some pretty weird setups out there, but we'll just assume for the time being that most people are using WASD. Now with this setup, you can use three fingers to maintain four directional movement freedom. It gives you the pinky finger and the thumb left over to add different functionality to this movement. Currently, I use my pinky for shift spring Sprint and control crouch. This still allows my WASD fingers to have complete four directional movement while augmenting it with sprinting or crouching. My thumb I use on space bar for jump and then alt for going prone. You can also bind the thumb to other keys like C, V, and X for different functionality. A common counter setup to this is using space bar for jump and C for crouch, whereas control then becomes the new prone key. This setup can work just fine, but you have to make sure that you're a toggle croucher rather than a hold croucher, otherwise your thumb is going to get tied up up holding down that C key and you're going to lose functionality of V and X if you want to bind those to other things. Now this here is a great foundation to build most of your key binding setups from. Most games actually come with this as sort of the default setup and then add in extra functionality. The important aspect about this key binding setup right now is that I still have complete freedom of movement while being able to jump crouch, go prone, and even sprint. I never have to take my fingers off the WASD keys while performing these functions. Now beyond this point we start binding additional functionality to our character generally that is not movement related. You want to kind of keep all the movement stuff in an area where you don't have to move your fingers off of the WASD keys. That being said, I still try and keep my fingers on WASD as much as possible and add as little functionality to the keyboard where I have to actually move those fingers around. This is where the mouse actually comes in handy and you can start binding a lot of functions that you use frequently over to your mouse so that you don't have to take your fingers off of WASD. Now aside from shooting, one of the most common functions you're going to be doing in this game is switching between different weapons, gear, and grenades. And by default, most shooters have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 bound to your primary weapons and gadgets. I recommend keeping most of these bindings stock, getting used to using them, but not necessarily relying on them if you don't have to. It takes a little bit of time to get your fingers up to the weapon and switch buttons and it's not really ideal because you have to take your fingers off of WASD keys to hit these functions and that can actually be the difference between life or death in a firefight. What if we didn't have to take our fingers off of WASD to quickly switch to a sidearm or switch back to our primary? What if there's one button that did all of this? Well fortunately Battlefield has that button. It's called toggle primary. This will bring you back to your primary weapon no matter what gadget or gun you have equipped. If you're already on your primary weapon it'll switch you to your secondary weapon. I buy this function to my lower thumb button and always have it ready to be pressed in pretty much most situations. This not only allows me to switch to my sidearm quicker than the 1, 2, 3, and 4 keys would, but it also makes sure I never sacrifice my mobility while switching weapons. It's pretty much the most common thing I have to do in any firefight. Switch to that sidearm, be ready to take on any additional threats or finish off the kill that you're working on. If that is the most common function that you're pressing, you'll probably want to put it on your thumb button or somewhere that again is not compromising your movement. Some shooters don't put as big of an emphasis on sidearm weapons or don't even have sidearm weapons. So if you're playing a different game then this might not really apply to you but just think about what functions you're using the most mid firefight and think about binding those to your mouse. If you have the option to start binding more weapons and gear to your mouse, this again could be really effective. I used to have scroll up bound to my gear 3 and scroll down bound to my gear 4. This was cool, but it didn't always function appropriately because the scroll binding in most shooters can be a little bit weird and not always function as designed. Again, most good gaming mice have the ability to press down on the scroll button. I bind this to melee, and this is a pretty common binding in general. It's a great reflex button to have. It's not something that you're necessarily going to be using all all the time, but if it's something you need to hit extremely fast, then you can always reach it with your index finger. 
Now let's move back over to the keyboard and talk about Q, E, R, and F. These are additional functions that you're probably gonna wanna bind to things that you're not gonna need immediately in a firefight. You are gonna compromise your movement while using these buttons ever so slightly. You can usually hit them really fast so that it doesn't matter too much if you use a mid firefight, but again, they want to be functions that you're using to say spot enemies, reload your weapon, uh, enter vehicles, activate control panels, etc. A lot of games have lean functionality and they'll bind Q and E to lean left and lean right. I'm not a really big fan of games with lean functionality because moving while leaning is a really big part of using that function and it becomes very difficult once Q and E are now taken up because you can't use W and D to move left and right. For me, I use Q as spot, E as enter vehicle, R as reload, and F for throwing grenades. Now I do throw grenades a lot and I was thinking about binding it to a thumb button when I tried it out. It just seemed a little bit awkward. The forward thumb button for me is a little bit out of place, but that is one function that you might want to think about binding to your mouse as well. Lesser used functions like toggling flashlight or laser or switching your weapon's fire mode can still be left as their default function, sort of radial keys further away at T and V, or you can start binding them in closer on your thumb if you have some open buttons available. X, C, and V, or even Z for that matter, are really good thumb buttons for additional functionality that you might not need as frequently. Generally speaking, if you find yourself hitting the wrong keys by accident, basically having to take your fingers off WASD a lot to hit certain functions, you might want to think about rebinding your keys a bit. Now obviously rebinding isn't going to make you a better player instantaneously. You have to get comfortable with the new key binding functionality. I see a lot of players try it out and get really frustrated and upset right away and then they just go back to the same way that they've been comfortable with. If you guys can actually ride it out, stick with it long enough and learn the new key binding, I promise it will make you a better player in the long run. Now there's a lot of different key binding philosophies out there, this is just mine, and if there's one thing that I want you guys to take away from this video aside from my specific key binding setup, it's the idea of not compromising your movement or mobility to access other functions in the game. Think about that every time you're hitting a certain button that you need all the time. Are you taking your fingers off of WASD? Do you have to compromise your ability to crouch or go prone or jump while hitting other functions in the game? This is something to think about and it could actually be hurting your performance. As always guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.